trials and maturity. Consider it a great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Hi, Katie's. Hi, Jack. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, babe. Come on, let's go. I know you want to go outside. You want to go outside? Yeah. Turn it into my little outdoor kitty. All right, go on. There you go. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the homestead. So today I thought I would do a day in the life, just a mom vlog type video. So I thought I would just take you guys along with us today, hang out here in the Watson household, nothing crazy going on, just homeschool. And uh, we are recording a video. Joe and I are working on a new video for the channel. We're building an enclosed trailer for the trip to Alaska. So I thought it'd be fun to take you guys along while we work on that. And as you guys just saw, I just got done with my morning coffee time. I tried to have some quiet time in the morning before Parker wakes up and we start school because once he's up, it is go, go, go. It does not stop. I like to have my coffee. I, I do my morning reading. Um, I don't do that every single day, but I really try to stay committed to that. And I think it's really important for us to not be too hard on ourselves if we fall off the bandwagon of reading our Bible just to hop back on it. The Lord is very forgiving. Right, so. Just threw my hair up in like a loose bun today. On a regular homeschool day, I don't do makeup and all kinds of craziness. And actually, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm having a uh, allergic reaction to some facial cream that I used. So go figure, it happens like right when I'm gonna do a day in life video. So I just took a Benadryl and I can uh, actually feel the swelling around my eyes and it was quite itchy, but it's starting to look a little bit normal. So I think we'll be okay, we're just gonna push on. So this week, Joe is home teleworking. Ever since COVID started, he teleworks from home every other week, and I love having him here. We cook breakfast together. We just kind of get to do all the things in between him doing his tasks for work on his computer. I'm actually running a little behind our normal schedule, so I need to go get Parker woke up, and we need to get breakfast going. I think somebody's ready to come inside. <laughs> oh. Come on, Leo. Get in line. Oh, Joe's out here cooking breakfast. That's really the only reason I like when he teleworks. It gives me a little break from having to do all the cooking for Parker. So, thanks, like Joe. Out, like, I'm not cutting you out. You're right here. Yay. <laughs> There's Joe. <laughs> so, it's funny. I do typically try to clean up a little bit before I, like, do filming. But Joe has been working on some projects. And I was like, hey, can you, like clean up your gun cases and your guns and all your stuff. And he's like, you know what? This is my house too, Tina. Got to film my life too. And I was like, you know what, Joe? You're absolutely right. He did some conversion kits and like this one's done pretty much, except he has to, he has to paint the charging handle. But he put all this together, the scope, the tripod stand, he painted it. And then he's still working on this one here, which is a longer barrel. Oh, excuse me, Striker. Does anybody else's stairs look like mine? Whoa, there's always toys. Come on, we get the whole herd. Come on, everybody. Let's go wake up Parker. <laughs> 
Get the zoo. Good morning. Hi, P. Good morning, my handsome. It's time to wake up. We got school today, okay? Look, all the animals came to say good morning to you. <laughs> you gonna wake up? Dad's making breakfast. Sausage and eggs, whoop whoop. <laughs> Ollie says good morning, Parker. He's so sweet. All right, P, I'll be downstairs waiting for you, okay? Got science and history today. Surprised me. I didn't know we were doing hash browns. It is cold and windy today. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Hello, Grandma Brownie. No eggs this morning. We're heading into the colder months. It is uh, almost December 1st, so we don't get as much eggs in the winter time, and that's okay. We don't put heat lamps in the chicken coop. We let the hens have a break and let their natural cycle just do what it's supposed to do. So right now, we're typically getting two to three eggs a day, sometimes just one, depending on how cold it is, but we'll come back out a little bit later and we'll probably have one or two eggs in the coop. Ooh, this looks good. So Joe's on keto, so right now he's not eating any potatoes or anything like that. I know, crazy, right? Looks good. Come on, Parker, it's time to eat. Oh, look, Joe made a smiley face for you guys. Oh, oh. You know you have serious issues, right? Is that its nose? <laughs> yeah. It yeah, like that's Squidward. his nose. It does look like a Squidward. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, bless us to your bodies. Do some bread. Amen. Amen. Thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt anyways. So, if you guys have watched some of my homeschooling videos, we do CLE Christian Light Education. But we only use CLE for <clears throat> language arts, reading, and math. Um, I have kind of come to the conclusion that I just feel like the science and even the social studies, uh, sometimes in the history, with Christian light education is a little bit dry for mine and Parker's taste. Uh, Christian light education already is not a very colorful um, curriculum. I don't really mind that though. It's just, you know, short, sweet, and to the point, and we really like that. But I just want to mix it up a little bit when it comes to science and even history. So, what we do for science and history is the good and the beautiful. I do like the good and the beautiful for science and history. Um, we have tried math and language arts with the good and the beautiful. I didn't care for it too much. I actually have a video on that and I'll link it here just talking about our switch. Last year, in the middle of the school year, we switched from the good and the beautiful to Christian light education. Um, but the good and the beautiful is very colorful. And so for science, Parker really enjoys that. 
So last year we did marine biology with the Good and the Beautiful, and that was a lot of fun because Parker loves anything to do with sea creatures. And this year we're doing the bird unit. I told you guys about this previously. So he's learning everything birds from wild birds to domesticated birds, which is actually what our lesson is gonna be about today. So he's really enjoying this science unit. And for history, I'm really excited because I actually just bought the good and the beautiful uh, constitution course. So I'm really excited, especially given the things that are going on in our culture right now, to teach Parker from the get-go where we come from, where our government comes from, how it was formed, our laws, how all of that works. So this just came in the mail a few days ago. So today we're going to be doing our first lesson on this. It comes with the lesson book here. So you've got... Tons of really colorful pictures in there with all the lessons that talk about our government, how our country was founded. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, not just for Parker, but for me. I was reading through this the other day and I was like, wow, there's things that even I don't remember that I learned from school, right? Um, so I'm gonna be kind of relearning a lot of the stuff about our government through this course here. So it comes with the, the lesson book there, and then it also comes with his Constitution student journal, which I think is really fun because there's pictures and stuff in there that he can color, so it's not like he's just journaling. Especially for a boy, I don't know if you guys can relate that have boys out there, but if Parker has to sit down and write a paragraph, you would think he's getting his wisdom teeth pulled. It's like, no! <laughs> but what I like about this journal, let me show you guys, like, it has pages like this about the people in our history that we're gonna be learning about. So he gets to draw pictures and color and then fill in the journal activities. So it's gonna be a lot of fun for him uh, to go through this curriculum. Very cool. And then it also comes with a reader, a Mystery on Constitution Island. So we are gonna be reading this reader aloud uh, every morning that we do our history lesson. Now, I do language arts, math, and reading every day without fail, four days a week. And one day a week, we just do science and history. So I think that the most important thing for a foundation for Parker is math, language arts, and reading. Those are the most important, in my opinion. And I like to sprinkle in science and history around that. We do not focus solely on those two topics every day. One, because our school day would be way too long if we did math, language arts, reading, science, and history, and our Bible curriculum. So we just do science and history one day a week. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So the most common bird in the world is the domesticated, what kind of bird did we just learn about? Chicken. Chickens, good job. Thank you. If chickens were evenly spread out between every person alive on earth, each person would have more than three chickens. So there's a lot of chickens, right? Yeah. Chickens are part of a bird group known as poultry. Other types of poultry include duck, turkey, geese, and other domesticated birds.
All right, you guys, so Parker and I just finished up school for the day, and now it's time to eat lunch before we head out for a walk. It's still pretty chilly outside, but we're gonna bundle up. It's definitely something that I like to do, getting outside and getting some fresh air for sure. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the Constitution course day one, it was a little dry. <laughs> And it was a little bit long too, but it was kind of like, you know, lesson one obviously was establishing that baseline of seeking truth and, you know, how to dive into the Constitution of the United States. So I was a little bummed because it just didn't have anything fun for Parker on that first lesson. It didn't even have like him coloring any pages or doing anything fun. It was just a lot of reading. And for a nine-year-old boy, it is really hard to like keep his attention. So yeah. So hopefully lesson two and beyond gets better. I know it will obviously because there's a lot of pictures in his journal for him to color and fill in. I'm sure it'll get better as we go, but today was a little dry. So I'm very happy that we just had science and history and we're not doing any other lessons today. So we're going to eat lunch and then we're going to head out and take the dog on a walk. Later on in the winter, we just start to get that really heavy snowfall in that area. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Okay. Um, oh goodness. There's just so much to consider. <laughs> oh, I feel so overwhelmed with this project, but it's like so important. Yeah. I'm assuming with you being out of state, it's really not making it any easier for you. So, I'll do the best I can to help out here. It's just right now there's kind of a lot of questions. And if you're for sure you want to proceed, yeah, I think um, regardless of, you know, like how overwhelmed I feel right now, it always feels like that at the beginning, but as you get going, like it's just taking it one step at a time for me, I think, but we definitely, definitely want to move forward. Like we might, we considered a complete solar package, but um, my husband is just really like for convenience. He's like, Tina, I, I just don't want to do it. I would rather just have power. Um, so I would say, yes, let's, you know, whatever we gotta do to start moving forward. Cause we're going to be up there March 17th. Um, okay. and so we'll be up there permanently as of that date. So we just need to get it going. So it's hopefully done in time. All right, I will do that, Tim, and um, we appreciate you working on this for us, and I guess we'll be in touch soon. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. He gets so excited, he can't even contain himself. <laughs> Do you hear him? <laughs> it's a little bit chilly out here, but I think once we get in the sunshine, <laughs> It'll be all right. So the deal is we do not take our dogs on enough walks. Like we should be ashamed of ourselves. It's like intermittent and we go through these phases where we're like, oh, we're gonna walk them every day. And we do that for like three days and that's it. So no doubt if we walked them more consistently, they would act better. But 
Ollie, he's pretty calm, like he's my favorite. Um, Stryker's completely, <laughs> completely unmanageable, so Joe has to hold him. Okay, you guys, so it's the end of the evening and we are gonna start dinner here in just a few minutes. Actually, I think Joe's kind of already got it going over here on the stove. We're making corned beef and cabbage tonight. Such an awesome comfort food, right? Just a chilly, cold day outside and it's a great meal too because Joe's on keto, so he's trying to watch all the carbs and stuff. So we're having corned beef and cabbage. Parker is playing at my Nampa's house. Joe's working out in the garage, and I'm gonna sit down, enjoy a glass of wine, and I don't know, just scroll Instagram for a few minutes or something, and just kind of like woo after a long day. So I definitely, um, you know, it definitely sucks having to pay to bring power out to the cabin, right? I mean, you know, me and Joe have talked about it and we're like, geez, it would be really cool if we could have found something that already had power ran to it. But the problem was, you guys, like, it was like we would find this, but then you didn't have that. Or we would find that and you didn't have this. So it's like we would find um, a property that had power, but it didn't have septic and it didn't, ha you know, just like it was either this or that. It was either or. Um, we never found a property that we really liked that kind of had everything. So this property has everything that we wanted. Um, even though Alaska, a lot of the space in Alaska is wide open spaces, right? We didn't want to live inside of a city or inside of a town. We wanted to be pushed out. So I wanted to have a little bit of land. I've had the best of both worlds. You know, we sold the farmhouse. We were living on 18 acres. And here in the one acre homestead, we just live on one acre. So the thing is, is I always think ahead and I'm thinking of the future and I'm like, and I see it happening all around me here in Virginia, especially as a realtor. Uh, you find people that are moving out to these rural areas, and before you know it, the neighbors start subdividing their lots, selling them off, especially in this market right now, people are seeing how much money they can make. And before you know it, you think you're out in the country and you've got five or six houses going up around you. So I don't want that. I wanted to make sure that we had enough space around us that people can just start building up you know, right next door to us. So I think 15 acres is a really sweet amount of land and where the cabin is situated on the property is perfect. So even if we do end up getting neighbors down the road, we're still kind of enclosed on that 15 acres. That's our private property. So I don't have to worry about seeing my neighbors or my neighbors seeing me. So, you know, it is a little bit of a downside that we're having to pay to pull the power out there. But like I said, we budgeted for that. We knew that that was part of buying this property. But nonetheless, things are happening very quickly. Here we are. I think today is the day of this recording. It's November 28th. Uh, no, it's not. It's November 29th. And so it's the end of the month. You know, we're about to head into December and we hit the road March 1st, you guys. And I'm just so excited.
Can you not just smile? Okay, babe, babe. I know this is hard for you. Can you just, can you just, okay. No? I'm done. I'm done. I just need you to be normal for five seconds. That's really the only reason I like when he teleworks. <laughs> Cause give me a little break from, stop babe. Go. <laughs> He's like, it's cold out here. Okay. No, 